<laughs> so a couple of things, I do fear what was kind of interesting, but it's very true. It's like, you know, the, the idea of um, replicating the way the professor does certain things is very different sometimes than the, the system that you perhaps use. So it kind of goes back to helping guide the student through the whole problem solving process. Oh my gosh, they're cold. See me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what are some okay, what are some let's start with the positive comments? What are some positive comments of students come and give you a little bit of praise? You're like, you know, they're just gonna make it. This was really helpful. This is really helpful. It makes so much more sense now. Oh, that was kind of one of yours, except for the last part. What was your last part? You explain it so much better than my teacher. Why can't I tell you this? <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And you know, and for you, in your role, it's not to pick on the teacher, you know? But your role is to say, you know, it's just a different way of looking at it and really helping them kind of maintain a positive attitude because if you fall into the, yeah, we suck, you know, paradigm, it is bad, you know? And that's how you get conflict with you. You get departments that just each other and you know teams that can't work together but if you really think about a positive way to help build that and you know that yeah there are some professors that are easier to work with than others that's a given but to actually promote a very growth mindset kind of mentality that says you know what it's just a different approach and I'm glad that you enjoy that this approach that works for you great and you can have that because I've heard people that fall into that trap it's like yeah this <laughs> Um, what are some other uh, what are some other comments that could be negative that you get from students that would be coming? You heard the one about I don't even know what my homework is. It's like uh, let's get started. <laughs> what are some other ones? What am I ever gonna use this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just stupid. <laughs> oh god, we'll say that one. Mainly because I see it all the time, the logout screen, because for Propel we always have students oh, log out. So I could say, and I need to do a better job on my part with sharing the praises, because that is the vast majority of what you get. And I'd say every day there's at least one really nice compliment to I a specific tutor. I vote that you have a wall. That wall should be a oh wall. Oh, my God. Very good idea. <laughs> so, okay. Good. Noted. Um, yes, because by and large... Students say your praises when I hear negative comments, and I do share that. If it's, it's generally because of noise levels or not feeling like they had been um, paid attention to in terms of you know circulating around when it's really busy. But I'd say and, you know, in terms of at team, least with Propel, yeah. yeah those are the two know, that we hear. You brought up for that was kind of splitting the space. And I'm going to spring that up. Still come back yeah. and forth right. between the space, but having that area be quiet zone in this area, like for quizzes and stuff like that, in this area being interactive zone. So. And that's really a great idea because it really provides that opportunity to continue to have a lively, yeah. spirited space, but give students room and quiet time and their, their time as well. That's fun. Um, Isn't one that's kind of specific to trio in itself? Because we're all one on one there. Um, I get a lot of students that come in and they'll say, I had a different tutor last semester and I didn't know how to teach anything like this. We didn't spend as much time as we were required to in this thing or in each week. And I don't understand what they were trying to tell me just as much as I don't understand what the teacher was trying to tell me. So I get that one a lot, but I just kind of have to counteract that one as well yeah. as the teacher. But you know what? Writing it down to whenever you hear students say that, say, well, we're all different. You know, I mean, I, I really have a different approach and I really hope that you enjoy it, you know? And really setting a foundation for really having a good working environment. And also pointing out, like you don't want to get into the, oh, well, school system doesn't know how to do this and that. But it goes back to what, if, if you hear that students complain about something, then especially if you're one-on-one, -on -one, those should be opportunities for, you know what, I actually want to learn more ways to get students to make a concept map, you know. And how do we do that for them to connect their ideas together? I need more help to share so I can help students do that. Use it all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But those are the type of things that I'm thinking that's essential.
potential. And if a tutor doesn't know how to do that on day one, they're going to need help. You are some of the best, you know, the moment you leave, everything that you have with you kind of leaves too. So sharing those best practices is great because that goes back to the new tutors that come in should be better than them. You know, they should have more tools and they should kind of have greater access to being great rather than having to relearn everything and starting from scratch if they know that you have to you know, start from scratch. So that's a really good point, you know, pointing out what is working and what isn't. And you know what? Students are complainers. We are, you know, like that's something that I think I have to know how to separate. It's like my four year old, she cries for no reason. And I'm like, what? Oh, I cry because I want to cry. And I'm like, okay, that's what you're for, you know? There are some of those things that stay with us for a lifetime. You know, people that come to me and I haven't eaten lunch, so I'm like, please. Oh, <laughs> 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 Just so you know it, that's all I have. Okay, so um, what about fears? What were some of those fears? That I won't be able to help you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because like, that's, that's kind of mine. Yeah, it's like typically I avoid tutoring people in the Math 098 and the Math 099 because I know the material, but they're taught a very specific way to do it that's not like the, like, the college algebra level way of doing, like solving polynomials and whatnot. So I don't know what they know, so I have a very hard time helping them out. So I kind of just end up avoiding the whole issue. Well, and you know, that is a very interesting space. I kind of got that, you know, just from like listening to them for five minutes, literally. I was like, oh, I don't know about this. But like in terms of the approach, it was very much like worksheet. So, I think that one of the strategies and tools in terms of communications with you know, you know the, the professor or not the most approachable um, sometimes, one of the things is, is actually documenting what are some of those ways. So students that have those, you actually have a binder that says, mm -hmm. Math 99, this is a typical way of solving this problem. So you can break it up and say, oh, okay, I get it now. So having some of those common examples, especially we when you know of like a set number of worksheets, a big deal. So, so maybe kind of having um, a, a toolbox of sorts that is more um, geared towards these are some of the common things that happen in this class. If you're not comfortable, and you're not the only one, there's another somebody else that said that. Um, what can we put together so all of us can feel comfortable when that student comes to us and says, I have to play with 409 and no idea what the heck to do with this, right? And then it's always good to show them a different way but then you take it back to this, I'm showing it to you. This is how your instructor, the approach that they use, you know, so that's the way to look at the differences. Because ultimately, if you think about it, you're setting them up for success in, in college algebra and teaching them the other method too. So it's kind of a give and take, you know, I mean, it's kind of the, those are the decisions that you have to make. All right, sometimes I ask for the notes just to see what the teachers, how, how they do it. So. Yeah. My way first is my way is the most simple way. Because I make, you know, keep it simple. So my way is the right way. <laughs> well, it's not the right way. <laughs> it's the simplest, most the simplest way to try to keep it simple. But you know, even deeper than that, you need to teach them the concept behind it. Right. right? And that's why I try to get that's why I try to get that the Because notes. if they understand the concept, the relationships between whatever it is, they're more likely to have that knowledge of what um, step by step after they need. They get the concept. It doesn't matter if you do this way. It doesn't matter if you do that way. Because well, there's like, way and you right, it's like, like an algebra, you know, like there's steps you can make do different at different times. Yeah. So, so and just so you know, like you're going to start getting kids that really have, you know, common core that's different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a shift. Mm -hmm. okay, it's going to come soon. Like some of you are first year. You might see that in your last year. You're like, what are you doing? What is right, like all the middle schools going Yeah, they're, they're looking at it's not it's a concept based math. It's not just, you know, solve this polynomial. It's what is polynomial and why, why does it matter in our world? Because we need connections to the real world. You know, sometimes I saw a good one on, um, I think it was in the back one. Um, I can't remember which one. But one of the posters has a really good, um, deep understanding. And I thought, well, it's a really good one. But it explains the concept and the connection to the world, you know, like why we should talk about this. You know, sometimes 
teachers have the hardest time doing this. Like actually putting concepts together and saying why, so what, why should it matter? They literally sit there and they struggle. They're like, I don't know. I don't know why I teach this. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't know why you teach this? You know, and it's like this disconnect. And it happens with professors too. They've done it so many, so, so long that they forget that like we kids, the students are like, <coughs> human beings that want these answers, but they can't explain them. So sometimes really finding a really good example to use helps, you know, to say, well, this concept and that concept, they go together and it's important to understand in a population book, or it's important to understand well, if we're going to run out of food, you know, whatever it is. A lot of times, it's very much economic, economics, the, the so what is economics, it's not livelihood, communities, resources, a lot of times. They, they tend to be that. It doesn't matter what area it is, especially for math, like, there's so many connections, but unless we all explicit, they really don't, they really don't tend to do it themselves. Another biggest fear? Are we talking about fears? Under, like, as a tradition. Like, because we're going to eventually not be able to help somebody, but oftentimes, like, they're cool with it, they're, they're okay, they're like, oh, well, I understand. But I think my fear would be that they get angry and then not only blame it on you, but the whole center, right? And then they, and because I've heard that, I've heard that reaction from people who say, well, don't want to come into the Propel Center or the Math Learning Center because they had a bad experience and therefore they don't come back. You know, as tutors, you are evangelists, I can tell you. We really want to make sure that we know that the Propel Center exists and that they're, that you're here to help, you know, in whatever way. And sometimes it might be like, hey, hand, you know, a little handhold in there kind of thing. But no, I mean, breaking those biases and those, uh, you know, the perceptions that people have is is kind of part of your job description, right? You know, or even for um, the trip program is, Showing students that there are other ways, other places, that even if I don't know the answer, you can go to so and so, and they are actually a physics major, and they might be able to help you with that, you know? Like having those connections might be a, a good way to do it. But resources is another one. So, you know what? I really don't know the answer right now, but let's, you know, let's kind of come up with a plan on how you can get it. Like, one of the things is doing a role play with your instructor. Okay, let's do that. That's something I can help you with right now. So, you're going to go to your instructor, and this is how it's going to go down, right? You're going to say, all right, do you need help with this and that? And you give them tools where they actually have these specific questions to ask their instructors, rather than going in and saying, I don't know what to do. I haven't even opened my book, right? So, that, that's, that's a role you can play, even if you don't know how to help them solve that problem. You can help them find a solution through other ways, right? And sometimes it might be connecting them to somebody in the community that does whatever that is. And it might be the um, so this that really ties into that last piece, and you know we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up with yet to be on the back. But what are some of the strategies?